Purser, Dan Purser, from D.com here. Uh, welcome to my Facebook Live. Um, and please, if you haven't, like me on, what do you, do they push the button? What do they do on YouTube, Facebook? Subscribe, oh. follow. Subscribe, follow, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is going to be, tonight's going to be on um, 15 medical therapies that have been shown to clean out your arteries. I am going to cover a bunch of natural options for plaque regression. I know, shocking. There are several that, that really can help you. These are completely natural options, not medicine. So, um, and tonight we're going to um, have Chantel Purser here. She's our youngest, uh, she's our youngest uh, uh, daughter, youngest child. And uh, Jackson's leading the parade. He's the, uh, he's the, uh, the stepson, my stepson who runs our companies and stuff. He's also doing this Facebook Live tonight. Um, oh, yeah. Wave, Jackson. Well, we're not on yet. We haven't done the intro. What's the intro? Do you want me to do the intro? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, that thing. Yep. You've been practicing? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> Is it playing? Mm-hmm. And now we're all on. Hi. Hello. <laughs> oh, now you're on. Mm-hmm. Chantel's on the left, Jackson's on the right. Okay. And I'm over here. Can they see me? Yes. They can okay. see all of us. How'd they do that? How do you, do you have it's like split camera or what do you have? Oh, yes. Magical. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wore a Lifesaver orange this morning or today for this. So I look like a, like a, a fireman or something. <laughs> Not like a prisoner. High <laughs> visibility. I feel like I am a prisoner someday of this job. Okay, I'm kidding. Okay, um, so 15 natu medical natural therapies that can cause plaque regression. Plaque is horrible. Um, do you want to ask me some questions, Chantel? Yeah. What causes plaque in arteries? What well, causes plaque in arteries? Increased blood pressure that causes inflammation, vascular inflammation, stress, lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyle, laying around, sitting around a lot, generalized inflammation, that people are smoking is the, probably one of the worst. Mm -hmm. Drug usage bad, and genetics, probably one of the worst. You can ask me the next question. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's my first time, everybody. <laughs> it is, you got shoved into this tonight. I'm excited to be here, I promise. What are the most deadly arteries for clogging? The coronary around your heart, especially the widow maker, which is the left ascending mm. artery, um, and the uh, carotid arteries, because it causes strokes. And after time, eat poor diet, um, which I didn't put up there, did I? No, I should have put diet um, on the, oops. I forgot to put diet as, um, as something that causes a plaque or plaque to occur. I'm gonna add that <laughs> for the next 10 years from now when we do this again. Um, <laughs> so diet, so if someone eats a poor diet and doesn't exercise enough and all that, uh, they'll, get, um, they'll get plaque buildup. And they and they can get strokes or heart attacks. So, so we can't eat Disney cupcakes all day. That's I sad. stopped eating them. Period. Darna <laughs> and crumble cookies. Shoot, yeah, those days are you're, past me. You're doing great by not eating those. Yeah, I know. You're doing good. You're doing. That's good. why I have to cover up because I'm gotten so skinny. <laughs> Gone from a two X to a large. Wasting okay. away. What is the reality of cardiovascular stents? You know, everyone gets them. Um, the the reality is they give a false sense of hope. Um, I, I'm going to tell you the hardcore truth. I'd never lie to my followers. Um, I don't think any studies have yet shown that they prolong life. Mm. Shocking, I know. The only reason you get it done is to prolong your life, even a day. They haven't even done that. They haven't shown one day of improvement. They give you a false sense of hope. Everyone walks around saying, I got rotor rooted my heart's good, I'm good for a while, I get those stents in. They didn't buy you anything. They bought you a false sense of hope. Um, the reality is, um, I've heard cardiologists tell me this, that they get paid for it. They don't, they know they don't work. It's sad, but you either get, um, coronary artery bypass graft surgery, cabbage surgery, or you take medication. Mm -hmm. Most people, if they knew would opt for the medication or the, or the natural options I'm going to go through tonight. So, uh, I'm going to go through all of them. I'm just going to cover everything. I need to turn this into a book because it keeps expanding. It used to be nine things and 10. It used to be seven and then nine and 10 and 15 tonight. So, um, it's getting bigger. 
What's the best test? Okay. <laughs> What's yeah. the best test What's according to the American test? College of Medicine? Um, and uh, it's a 64 slice cat, 64 slice cat angiogram. They're going to tell you exercise stress tests. They're going to tell you a lot of other things. 64 slice cat angiogram, bar none, is the best test. Um, it is, does involve um, dye injecting. You get these cat scans. They're gated to your heartbeat, so they get them right at the right moment. They look at your uh, blood vessels. And they can tell you if you're 1% clogged, 2% clogged, 4% clogged, whatever. Also, a calcium score is very important. Usually you get the calcium score right before they do the 64 slice cat angiogram. And so um, calcium scores um, will tell you, will determine the plaque hardness, which is good if it's hard. And if it's soft, plaque, very bad since these tend to break loose. Um, so EST is exercise stress test. Cardiologists love to do those, even though... A 64 slice cat angio um, is uh, is better, um, and uh, 85 percent cloggage before the exercise stress test even shows anything. So, um, and then they have to do um, then they have to do the uh, coronary angiography, mm -hmm. so where they inject dye right into your blood vessels of your heart uh, to see where it's going. That's what they really want to do, uh, but the reality is a 64 slice cat angio or a calcium a coronary artery score, uh, those are much better options. Their e a coronary artery score is easy and painless. I've got references in there when we post this. So, uh, so you can go look at them. We'll make sure to get those out to you guys. Um, does you think anyone knows on that listens to me that I wrote a 700 plus page textbook on preventive medicines, my first book I wrote? Hopefully they should. Yeah. Yeah, I called the program 120. It's still apropos. There's a few things I would update in it as I've watched over the years. I don't know if I ever will. Maybe I'll have Jared do it. Um, but um, maybe he and I can do it later. I know I asked him tonight if he would, because uh, he's finishing up medical school, starting his fourth year. Uh, I think he and I should work on um, turning these, this data tonight that I'm going to present to you in a book, into a book. Um, I think it'd be a really popular post a lot on Amazon. Um, so now I'm going to go through plaque regression interventions. These are mostly off-label uses, but a lot of them are on-label uses too. They because they work. There's lots of tons of data on it. Uh, I even talk about the articles on it. On a lot of these, how many articles are on PubMed? If I mention that, if I say 121 articles, like I will on the first one, it's um, it's on PubMed. There's 121 research articles on it. That's crazy. On on. For example, number one is high dose melatonin causes plaque regression. I think that's so shocking. Yeah, 121 articles, like 100 milligrams a day of melatonin at night, not a day. Don't take it during the day. <laughs> um, not the time to release. Look at my previous video I, I did on high dose melatonin. It dramatically reduces inflammation. It's been shown to cause plaque regression. Hmm. So, number two, lowering blood pressure to below 120 over 70 really critical it causes plaque regression did you know that no no so don't get high blood pressure jackson get your blood pressure down quit quit okay. answering all the questions they're posting fit is a fiddle fit <laughs> is a fiddle um that's me i'm a really old like stradivarius or something um so yeah um tons of data on pubmed about that uh, blood pressure 120 over 70 is optimal. That's why they want you to get there. It reduces vascular inflammation. It reduces your risk for stroke and heart attack dramatically. So you want to get your blood pressure down. Keep it controlled. Monitor it. Don't, don't, even if it makes you like headed for a while, you get used to it. So it takes a while. Optimizing your thyroid levels. That's the FT3 level. Usually to 4.0 to 4.8. Lab equipment varies. The ranges kind of vary, so it's hard to give an exact number. I say 3.8 to 4.8, somewhere in there, according to your range. Um, you don't want to go high, but it will cause plaque regression. It is associated with plaque regression. I don't know if it'll cause it, but associated with it. Mm. So I think it'll cause it. Um, nice, and here's a big one. Nice, and 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams a day. How often have you seen me flush? A lot, I turn bright red. It's kind of weird. Yeah, because they take 2,000 milligrams a day of the niacin. CRT from uh, which is 500 milligrams. So I take four of those from um, Designs for Health. 
it minimalizes flushing. It's a controlled release tablet, um, but I still flush a little. Not it's not horrible. Um, two thousand milligrams a day. The studies have shown fifteen hundred, but two thousand does it better, especially if you take it with a statin. I know a statin is a swear word to you guys. I want you to stop that. So um, when your life's on the line and you got bad plaque, and you're facing a stroke or heart attack, you're probably going to really strongly have a come to Jesus moment and pray about those statins. You're going to remember this talk. Statins are, are okay if they're used correctly. What's a statin? A statin is a, um, a drug that lowers cholesterol. It's originally from a, which Jared was here. He explained before. I can't remember all the pharmacology of it now, but it's, uh, um, it were, it's a fungus. It was originally from a fungus or yeast, I think. Mm -hmm. And they somehow from a streptomycin, I think somehow figured out that it can lower cholesterol and reduce the risk for a heart attack. The problem is it's a random person taking it um, gets maybe a 1% benefit versus a higher risk for side effects. So unless you have a lot of plaque or carotid artery plaque or coronary artery plaque, don't take it. You should do the niacin or you should lower your blood pressure or you should do some of these other things, not take a statin. It's kind of a one of the last resorts when nothing else works. Doctors need your kit, use it as a first resort, which frustrates everyone. Um, so nice and 2000 milligrams a day. Uh, start with 250 and go up slowly. Half an adult aspirin reduces the flushing and also eat less carbs. If you're eating a lot of carbs, you'll flush on because niacin goes after triglycerides. Mm -hmm. Don't eat carbs, eat a paleo diet. Shame on you for loading up on carbs while you're taking niacin. I've even taken cool showers, not lately, because I'm taking this really good CRT stuff. I've maybe flushed for five or 10 minutes. Kind of annoying, but that's it. It's really not so, that bad, And I have the 405 articles on niacin causing plaque regression. 405. So the other problem you got, number five, there's only two statins that cause plaque regression. Only two that I know of. And I know they push a lot of the others all the time. Show me the data. Show me that. Show me that they cause plaque regression. Simvastatin and rosuvastatin, rosuvastatin, also called Crestor, are the only two statins that I know of that that really that are solidly associated with plaque regression. You got to take lots of mega cunol, the CoQ10 I like, when you're taking a statin. It gets rid of most of the side effects, or reduce your dose if you get the muscle pain. It'll stop you usually. I'd reduce down to the smallest possible dose. Better than none, but I always prescribe the max dose to patients of either one. I can't tolerate with suvastatin; it blows my my liver enzymes up. So I have to go off of it, and they come right back down. Mm. I've given up. Even ten milligrams will do it. Um, so I'm on simvastatin, which does not bother me at all, but it does cause plaque regression. Why do I do it? Because I had a car accident in 2001 and damaged the front of my heart and had to have a four vessel bypass because I damaged vessels there and I don't want those clogging up. Um, so I take it. So number six, a statin plus the drug is Zetamibe, 10 milligrams. Zetamibe is about as harmless as you get, but um, there's a hundred, hundreds of studies that support this. 10 milligrams of a Zetamibe or Zetia was the name brand, will cause really big time plaque regression with a statin. So I take that, I take a statin, I take niacin, 2000 milligrams and I take Azetamibe, um, 215 articles actually. The biggest of all, the great granddaddy of all plaque regressors um, is pioglitazone. It's a diabetic medication. Uh, Rosiglitazone was even better, but because it caused, it caused too fast the plaque regression stuff would break loose and kill people, <laughs> oops. Um, they had to pull it off the market. Um, so pioglitazone is a diabetic man. You gotta get someone to prescribe it to you but it is the ultimate plaque arrestor. I mean, it cleans out your arteries in about three to six months, they are clear. It's a wackadoo how well that stuff works. Um, I've got some videos at the end of this uh, on this talk, we'll, we'll post so you can look at them if you want uh, and go through them. They're, they're, uh, they're PowerPoint presentations by well-known physicians in these fields. Just put two or three of them on there. I'll try and find more. Um, the pioglitazone, a small dose for three to six months works incredibly well. You gotta watch out for hypoglycemia with it. But when I have patients that come to me personally and I see them physically, I'll, I'll suggest the pioglitazone. 
um, and it works really well for plaque regression. Um, PDSK9 uh, inhibition, also called Repatha or Evolicumab. It's a weekly injection. It's very expensive. causes plaque regression. I've never used it, never had to. Uh, that would be a lipidologist or cardiologist who understands lipids. Do that. That was number eight. Nine, estradiol replacement in women uh, uh, can cause plaque regression and prevent heart attacks. Uh, glutathione GPX3 activity or glutathione of ours. I, I won't say our VARS does it. We haven't tested it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if, if the GPX3 activity works, it'll um, then glutathione in general, functional glutathione, wherever that is. Only one out there. Oh, yeah, by the way, we just got patents in Australia and about to get it in Canada. Or did it or We got in that. Canada about to get in Flip Australia. It. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're about to get in Australia. Yeah. So, um, so on our glutathione, that's how good it is. Remember, no one else has patents on them. So. Also, we still have our sale going on until tonight. Oh, what's the sale? Remind me. 50% off for our antioxidant bundle, which is... 15 or 50? 50 for Serum X and Flores Revive. 5 Are you kidding me? Mm-mm. Yeah, it's off of the original pricing of, of CRM X and Vars Revive. It's a wonderful deal. Seventy nine ninety seventy nine ninety for, for both, both bottles. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, it's no. awesome. <laughs> and it's still going on? Mm-hmm. And then That's cheap. fifteen percent off for indoor renew. Right? And, and copper balance. Yeah. And brain support too. And brain yeah. support. Wow, you better grab them. I know, definitely. Yeah, it'll be a long time. B late november before we do that again <laughs> so if they grab them now stock up if you feel like you missed out you should join our because the price <laughs> things get uh, the price to build out's being more expensive <laughs> so glutathione lots of studies I'll, I'll flush that out more in future talks but in my book probably but hey uh, glutathione can help cause plaque regression who knew mm-hmm. we did not jared look tonight superoxide dismutase um, there's not no studies have been done on that plaque regression, but I think it would help. Uh, optimizing your HGH levels, IGF-1 levels, to uh, above 300, uh, which is normal for most people, actually, no matter what they say, it should help, should cause plaque regression. Interesting. Um, fasting, intermittent fasting does it too, hmm. big time. So intermittent fasting can cause plaque regression. Can, um, I'm going to go into some more here. So I'm giving you lots of natural options, and we'll post these. Icosapent ethyl, um, oh, sorry, icosapent ethyl. What's the name brand of that stuff, Jackson? No idea. That fish oil. From you where? You studied it. The one that got FDA approval for plaque regression. Uh, Vesepa? Vesepa? Vesepa, yeah. <laughs> Vesepa, Vesepa. Yeah. Very fancy FDA approved fish oil. Um, or high dose EPA fish oil. There's uh, tons of articles on on it about it. Uh, there's a really interesting article in quantitative analysis of 563 plaques. The interval change of low attenuation plaque volume was significantly different based on EPA dose. Um, really interesting. The the um, significantly decreased in EPA. The high dose EPA group um, significantly reduced their plaque. In coronary arteries, isn't that wild? Um, that um, really good omega veil synergy from Design for Health may fall into that. So, um, hmm. number 14, we're getting towards the end, people. Aren't you glad this is going to be quick, quick and dirty, quick and boring? Uh, <laughs> bergamot oil, naringenic, can lower cholesterol up to 30%, has been shown to cause plaque regression. 31 articles on PubMed. Bergamot oil, naringenic. Uh, uh, Steven Sinatra has his cholesterol solution capsules on Amazon. It's bergamot oil, which is orange oil, a specific orange oil. And the last one, number 15, exercise and plaque regression. It works, 134 articles. More like um, cardi- cardio exercise, long and slow walks, go out for 10 miles, whatever. I know, get used to it. At least four, you want to do at least four a day, if not five, 10,000 steps. Mm. If you're not doing 10,000 steps, you're probably not going to get plaque regression. So, um, for max exercise. And I put four videos up, too, four video links. Um, just really interesting stuff. Are there any questions? 
Uh, Testosterone can cause plaque regression too, by the way. I have a question. I didn't add that one. Oops. Are any of these preventative? Yeah, they're all preventative. So you can start taking them now. Even if yeah, I wouldn't do the statins preventatively, but or the PKS9, but mm -hmm. um, inhibition, but yeah. Or the azetamide. But these natural things you can definitely do. Mm. You can definitely take higher dose nice. And you're gonna flush. Get this get the nice and CRT. Jackson, can you put our link up for that? Is that from Designs for Health? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This little blue bottle. So much interesting stuff. Uh, tons of research on all this stuff. Um, 803 articles on the plaque regression hypertension. Isn't that interesting? You bring down the high blood pressure. Fasting, 192 articles. Um, 191, 190 articles on intermittent fasting. Um, exercise, 116 articles. Um, PCSK9, 41 articles. The plaque, the diet has a lot to do with 396 articles. Um, 25 articles on, on estradiol causing plaque regression um, in women, not men. Though it probably is very cardioprotective in men. All these guys that come in and say, I'm taking testosterone, I'm getting boobs. I'm like, that's estradiol. It's actually good for you. It's cardioprotective. They're like, I don't want the boobs. I'm like, okay, I'll treat it. <laughs> uh, just so you know. Uh, 20 articles on thyroid and plaque regression still causes it. Um, and go on and on. Interesting stuff. So what would be the number one thing that you've seen above anything else that helps reduce plaque and to help, help uh, plaque regression? Oh, oh, by far and away, the pioglitazone. But what's the easiest? These natural ones are easier. Naringenin or bergamot oil. Um, take it in a capsule. Get the, Look at, seriously, before you mix your own up, Look at what they've done at, at um, cholesterol on that cholesterol solution from Steven Sinatra on Amazon. I look at that data and there's lots of literature about it. Um, we're gonna play around with that, see what we can do, make it better. Um, there's uh, there's exercise, that really helps too. There's lowering your blood pressure, that's pretty dramatic. Um, but if you have bad plaque, you need to get hardcore on it. Go to someone who'll deal with this. Most most doctors don't know all this stuff. I guess I'm kind of one of the rare options. There are probably some lipidologists who understand a lot of this. But if you, you want to go and get talk to a, a um, highbrow cardiologist who will start quoting you articles and, and get all everything all screwed up. Anyway, yeah, I just know this stuff works. Lots of data on it. I've got several patients I've been following for years with bad plaque and their calcium scores keep going down, which is huge. Wow. So and that's how you kind of monitor it. You go in once a year and get a calcium score. Cool. And if it drops 60, 70, 80%, it's a big deal. So, um, and you just gotta do it. So better than having a heart attack stroke or, uh, cause you're getting cabbage, great. What about your carotid arteries? They're gonna be clogged too. So you gotta go get carotid artery um, in our arterectomies. Wonderful. That's three major cardiovascular surgeries. Great. Or you can try medicine first. I try the medicine. Yeah. We do have a couple questions on here. Okay. If you don't have any side effects with resuvastatin, should you still take CoQ10? Yeah. Yeah. Helps. Yeah. It will. Resuvastatin will blow through your CoQ10. You'll become exhausted, fatigued, brain foggy, tiredness behind your eyes because I know I have a CoQ10 deficiency now. By the way, because of all this, my exercise, everything else, I think my maintenance dose on Mega Q now is 12. 12 a day. <laughs> Unbelievable. But I really work out hard, you know, everything I'm doing right now and all the stress and all the work, coming back to do these Facebook lives, stuff like this, all this adds up. And uh, I stay super active. So yeah, I, I tried four, I tried two, I tried four, I tried eight, I can't get ahead of it. With 12, I got ahead of it. Actually, I took 20 for a couple of weeks, yeah. And I, the fatigue kind of went away because I had a severe intracellular um, um, CoQ10 deficiency. Still, still, just worse than it was before. And I just can't get up with it. Now I'm ahead of it. 
I think I was taking 24 some days. Yeah, I was going through bottles fast. I kept going to Walmart and buying them. But you know what? I feel normal now. I'm ahead of it. I didn't have to take any before I drove over here tonight. Wow. So, um, yeah, keep taking your coca as you, If you're older, you need it. We're way past our due date. Historically, we should die around 25, 24. If you look back the last 10,000 years, we didn't live much past that. Um, she keeps about to start old age. When she's 25, she's 18 now. Not far from it. So, um, good thing I'm taking my CoQ10 already. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. French board every day. Yep. Um, I'm withering away. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Better not be. Um, <coughs> is the glutathione, is it good for mold? I have no idea. I think so. Definitely. I, I know the one clinic that we sell a lot of glutathione to back east. Oh, so they treat mold. That's their main thing. Black that they mold do. and stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. All day long. Because they're in Florida. Yeah. And they love Vars glutathione for other patients. Yeah, I have no idea, but I think so because it removes biofilms and molds survive off their biofilm, which is like a force field they create. Bacteria will hide behind the mold biofilm and cause horrible infections. That's what they think causes interstitial cystitis. And we think our glutathione removes that biofilm and helps those people get cured. So it should do it. We have the only patented one. We've got a number of 33, maybe 34 FDA claims we'll go after one day with it that are reasonable. Yep. So, yeah, we just don't have the $30 billion or whatever that would cost. A million. Not quite Okay, billion. $3 billion. <laughs> It costs $3 billion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't uh, have that. What Omega were you mentioning before? Omega Vel Synergy by Designs for Health. Oh, yeah. We'll show them that. That's such a good product. It always works on those intracellular omega uh, deficiencies. That stuff is nasty good, but it's a typical designs for health product. Um, we make some stuff for them. They wanted it to be the best. It took us five years to get it right. Those guys, wow, they're they're really anal. <laughs> they're great. They're really good at what they do. They always want their products to be the best, the most supreme product out there so they own the market and that's kind of what they've done then i'm thinking about synergy as wow yeah so i take it me too because i need to start that was your brain too yeah always in search of a better omega i think that's probably the ultimate one i've found yeah definitely uh can you use vars glutathione if on prednisone and Sorry. an inhaler yeah cool mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to actually have the first. We're going to go for it. And we think we'll have the first. We think. We don't know. We'll have the first FDA-approved um, micronized version. This is a bar technology we use it for, for, um, for cystic fibrosis, stuff like that. I was like, wouldn't bars help with your asthma? That's what I would think. If you, Yeah, it can be in its current form. Yeah. It can only be glutathione in, in, in mist water. So, um, yeah, we can't use, yeah, we got to, we'll have to, it's still the same technology, but just different things in it. Mm. Interesting. That's um, coming. How, how can you know if you have high or bad levels of plaque? What kind of testing? Do a calcium do score. Ask your doctor to get a calcium score. Order a calcium score on it. You go, I think it's a radiological test. You go do it. They're not expensive. Your insurance should pay for it. They don't, they're not expensive, you pay out of pocket. I probably would pay out of pocket, and do it on the side. Do it on the side, so no one knows. No one knows but you. And you're and a trusted physician who won't report it to um, insurance company or anyone that no one needs to know, or the government or anyone. Should you not take any calcium at all if you have- No, problems? it has nothing to do with that calcium score. Mm. That's a common misconception but it's not true. Yeah, you're gonna tell a, a 50 year old woman not to take calcium. She's already, most of them are headed toward osteoporosis because they never took enough calcium to begin with and they get a high calcium score. Their doctor will mistakenly, they do that all the time, say, you um, you need to get off that calcium. It's cause not, no, it has nothing to do with that calcium score. Is there anything you can't take niacin with? Not to my knowledge, it's just B3. It's just a B vitamin. It's a good B3. Yeah, you want a really good B3. But let me tell you, 2,000 milligrams will beat you up, even with that CRT. 
So you're going to flush some. Just get used to it. It's worth it. Because every time I flush, I think, I'm wiping away some plaque in there. It's gone now, Bob. It's left. That's what I think. <laughs> Bob. Plaque went away. Bob loves it. I love it. It's Bob your alter ego. Bob's my doctor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is me, really. If they're not in our area, how can they get an appointment with you? Just call and set it up. Yeah, we're online. Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. we're online. Zoom. Yeah. Most of the stuff... Yeah, especially all this natural stuff and vitamin panels. Stuff like that. I definitely get a vitamin panel if you have a plaque problem, but um, but because um, it can correct a lot of issues with your cholesterol and all that. Um, but yeah, most of this stuff can be handled without prescriptions. So, is it a test for CoQ10 levels? Yeah, intracellular, the only one I know of. Yeah, I'm sure there's a serum, but I can't believe it's very accurate. We use it on our CMA. That's an intracellular CoQ10 level. Yeah, and I had this horrible brain. I kept thinking it was an iron deficiency because I had that last time. But I did have a little mild CoQ10 last time. No, it's just gotten worse. My iron had cleared up, resolved. I can't believe it because I, and then I donated blood the very next day after I did the test. So it's probably down again. Um, but my, um, but yeah, that CoQ10 will make you feel tired behind your eyes hard to focus they'll come in waves like you'll be fine for the morning then about lunchtime you think am i diabetic because why do i feel like crap um no it's just your coq10 is dropping and then what brand of coq10 do you recommend i mean mega q all cherry red label get it at walmart costco or amazon mm-hmm. yeah there's, 100 milligram there's that version yeah that version works ubiquinol yeah it's ubiquinol not ubiquinone mm -hmm. ubiquinone does not work it's not as a except for the only time ubiquinone works is when it's designed into a product like our brand support they're designed to work with but it works strictly with the parallel quinoline exactly it's it meant can't to work. be ubiquinone ubiquinol in that product yeah it's so meant. don't count on that to do your heavy lifting you need you need Q, ubiquinol the ubiquinone is specifically works within the mitochondria along the electron transport chain. Right. It's its main area. Which is what where pyroloquinoline really the does PQQ. the job. That's yeah. why that product is designed. Yeah, the brain support, yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to take them together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Take your CoQ10. If you're fatigued all the time, if you're taking a statin and you're fatigued, if you're uh, taking thyroid, anyone who takes thyroid should be on QNO. You, uh Sorry, mega QNO. Not the brown, not the tannish red, brown red lab, label, the cherry red label all the way through. It's cherry red. Any other questions? Probably blew everyone away. No one, no, this just came out of the blue. Huh? Sorry, I started Sorry. mentioning it, I think Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, something. So, um, other than a statin, what other things can cause a drop in CoQ10? Thyroid, taking oral thyroid medication, exercise, mm -hmm. surgery, stress, um, anything that gets your trauma. heart pumping, <laughs> trauma, yeah. running marathons, exercising, especially as you get older. You're not 20 anymore. You got to stay ahead. If you stay ahead with your CoQ10, you'll feel like you're 20. Um, those are the big ones that'll do it. And I do all that. Yeah. And do I have trauma? Some days, you patients, some of you patients give me trauma. <coughs> Uh, what does someone's asking about MTHFR? Are two different MTHFR products? Yeah. If you want to get into them at all, just explain and talk. Well, about Well, yeah, let me do that. Uh, and I did a video today about that. I think it'll be on the uh, Fibro page, but um, um, and we'll post some stuff on our page. But um, the Endure is more for a twelve ninety eight C. So if you overmethylate or tend to overmethylate, or you methyl you you over methylate and you get really weird feeling you probably want to shy away a little more from the renew it's got a lot of methyl groups and the endure hardly, hardly has any so there's a place for renew obviously everyone needs methyl groups but um you can get them elsewhere so or take your renew if you like it you'll know if your body likes it you'll take it and you won't over methylate and i have patients who take two three four seven of those i'm shocked when someone tells me they're taking seven most people take one or two a day, and then they stack on Endure after that because Endure won't cause you to overmethylate. You kind of go up until you overmethylate on the Renew. So I've had patients get to 20 a day of them, and then they overmethylate. Oops. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah, it happens. They're not tired anymore, but they get tired when they overmethylate, and then we have to back it down. They end up on ten or something. I have those. It's always a balancing act with MTH bar. But you got to deal with it because it can cause homos. If you don't deal with your MTH bar properly, you can get high homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is readily converted to glutathione in that whole stru MTH bar structure. That's the real main damage that MTH bar causes. It allows you to increase your homos. It causes you to increase your homocysteine levels, which is massively massively causes strokes and heart attacks. Worst thing ever. Worse than any other form of inflammation. That's why I said genetics. I was thinking of that. Homocysteine will kill you. Worse than anything else out there. It will descend upon you. You can be that's where those people that when they have heart attacks at twenty one or eighteen or twenty three or thirty two, historically, not recently, there's other reasons for that I won't get into. But um but yeah, that's because their their um homocysteine levels were high. When I was um Overall, the nursing homes here in the state, um, and uh, signed by the the, um, the uh, review team and stuff to, to clean up nursing homes. Every big nursing home here in Utah has a big room full of younger women in their 20s and 30s who stroked out because they didn't properly treat their MTHFR. They had high homocysteine levels. No one had checked them. I did. I'm like, wow, that she has a high homocysteine level. They all had high homocysteine levels. You'd see their husbands come in with three and four little kids in tow that they'd had together and mom's sitting there in vegetative state. It's just horrible, horrible. Can't talk, can't hardly move, it's just bad. Um, and that's because their MTHFR, they didn't know, no one knew even, I didn't know back then, to deal with it, how you dealt with it. So um, I just know they had a high homocysteine level um, and no one had figured out how to bring it down. They told you to take B12 or fol folic acid or something I know you got to get more exact than that. You got to follow it too. So homocysteine level. If you always wondered if you have family members who have um, strokes or heart attacks in 32, 28, whatever, you better look at yourself because you're at risk. Because you probably have a high homocysteine level, and you're headed down that same road. It's bad. There's that brain support article from Life Extension. Um, that if they ask for it, I don't know. I've, we've got it somewhere. I keep it. I always email it out to patients. So. But they since they outline our product, we had to email them and say you can't really do this product because we developed it. <laughs> Life extension, and they weren't real happy with that. But the article was great. Thank you. <laughs> that is a good article. I remember. Yeah, I use yeah. it all the time. Mm -hmm. They wrote it for us. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think that was funny. That's the last one. You're still looking at questions. Yeah, there's a couple coming in, but other ones we can answer later. Okay. How, so how, many, view, how many viewers? Uh, we've had about 70. Yeah, it's it. not bad yeah, it's for good. this subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell your friends about it. Tell your family about it. If you have friends who have um, coronary artery disease or, or stroke risk or have had a stroke, they need to be doing all this. Heart attack, stroke, you got to jump on all this you can so it never happens again. So make sure the homocysteine level is low. Uh, you got to be all over this. So, um, sorry, I'm looking at Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, be all over it. Don't be afraid of it. Jump in it and get on it. Um, there's just so many good things you can do. Now, you know why doctors say exercise, eat Mediterranean diet, stuff like that? Um, it's because of this. This is what they're really, this is their end goal. And I'll tell you, the end goal can be done better by adding some niacin and other things. Um, glutathione, niacin, all that. I do 30 squirts a day. So, okay. Thank real, you for watching. Real quick, oh, yeah. um, a little update with our VARS glutathione. Um, that We've been out of stock for the last couple of weeks, and we're still going to be out of stock until about mid-June. So just a couple of weeks more. We should be back. That's painful. It is very painful. I know a lot of people have been asking for it all the time. Uh, and yeah, I'm waiting for it too. So we do. No, I'm using like shriveled up bottles I find around the house. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the bars revive the topical glutathione. Uh, that's a great product yeah. to use in the meantime as well. Yeah, if, if you take eight squirts of glutathione a day, just try four or five squirts of that, rub it in your leg or wherever. Yeah. Smell goes away really quick. Yep. It does reduce inflammation, and you definitely absorb it systemically. 
Yeah. We know that from our patent study. Definitely. So, yeah, that stuff is nasty good. So, yeah, use the Fars Revive. So, I, yeah, we're coming out with a new flavor, too, eventually. Mm-hmm. That's pretty quick coming up, isn't it? It, it should be. I mean, uh, our oh. formulating partner, Steve, he gives me updates all the time. We have another flavor he wants us to try oh tomorrow. Gosh. So it's, it's <laughs> ever in uh, flavor no, town. No, tell him to stop. <laughs> get it made. <laughs> we, we've got multiple really solid options. And so that's what we were trying to balance. Uh, what? Out with Everyone a new loves flavor. the lemon peppermint. Oh, I'm kidding. We were trying to balance coming out with the new flavor while also trying to. I don't know. We, that's why we ran out of Make stock. Make the old school stuff. Yeah, all of it. It all kind of just ran into each other, and we ran out of stock of glutathione completely. So we apologize that for that. Yeah. We tried. The people want it, you guys. Uh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, we'll, so we'll sell both versions for a while and see how you guys like it uh, once we get there. Real quick before we go, um, I just I want to just hear about Serum X a little bit. Some of the top things that you've seen with it, some of the benefits that you've seen, I mean, aside from plaque regression and all that, but yeah, it doesn't work for that. Mm -hmm. we, don't know, we don't have any data on it. Um, um, uh, imp pain, inflammation in your joints, knees, shoulders. I don't know about hips, but I've had some patients tell me it worked for hips. Knees, shoulders, neck, it's really good on. Um, and um, But knees, you sit on mine. Um, and um, yeah, helps with all kinds of weird things. It's if you helps. hurt, rub it on it. I know we did the IC study, which was incredible, 100%. Uh, um, what was the deal? 100% of the patients had 85% improvement or more or something like that. 67% mm -hmm. improvement. Oh, yeah, it was at 67. Yeah. Well, that's still pretty good. It's very Compared strange. to nothing else oh, works for it. Absolutely. Other yeah. than a kick of the groin, that, is, that just makes it worse. That's <laughs> what was so cool. I think probably the most telling to me is that it was an improvement in their symptoms, not just the pain. The pain relief was amazing. That's great that well, they can have that, but they actually had improvement of their symptoms for this disease. I have a lot of patients who use it for PMS, yeah. pelvic pain. It yeah. helped a lot with yeah. mine. Chicky does. Sh oh, sorry, Chantel. Sorry, I got to do your name. You're all right. You're my your dad. Family name. It works. <laughs> um, there's a story behind that. Anyway, we'll leave it alone. Yeah. Um, I would say inflammatory pains is generally what we. Oh see. yeah, it's crazy good. Yeah. Fibro. Yeah, we haven't even touched it. Burns. Uh, really good for burns, light burns, any kind of burn, any kind of burn. Mm -hmm. um, radiation burns, everything. We use sun it all burns, kinds of burns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sun burns is incredible. Summer's coming. If you get a kid or you with a sunburn, or we, I know my wife put it on our grandson who was one and a half when he fell and bumped his head. He had a lump on his noggin. Lump went away in seconds, mm -hmm. and he quit crying really fast because he was crying. Yeah. And then she explained why. He had that very slight red mark on his forehead, so this huge bump, mm -hmm. uh, because it's it stabilizes um, neutrophils and mast cells. So um, uh, I know that Yell allergist on our FDA panel told us to put it in your nose for allergies, because it gives hay fever relief, stuff like that. Just a little dab in your nose, four to six hours of relief. And she said she'd remember she'd yeah. help us get through the FDA. Yeah. One, we need to go talk to her again. Uh, one interesting thing I heard about just this last week, and I have a couple people just testing, playing around with it, is tinnitus. Yeah. Uh, Your mom tried it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it worked for her. Yeah. About a 60%, 70% improvement mm -hmm. in tinnitus. Yeah. yeah. And she just swirls it in her ear. Yep. Put it on a Q-tip if you want, just run it around your ear. Oh, and your wow. Ear. That's, I mean, yeah. that's what I've seen more than anything is you put it on something, and it just opens. Uh, whatever whatever it is. I mean, if it's you got a tight muscle, if you got something, just anything yeah. kind of blocking, it just opens. Uh, I, I don't really know how else to describe it other than that. Well, we've had big entities. It's going to get out there pretty quick now. Let's yeah. see. We've already been approached by big people. So. Yeah. Big. So, um, as big as there are. So, um, yeah, it's going to be everywhere. Yeah. So, I'm just, I want to plug it one more time. The Vars Revive and Serum X is in a bundle on sale right now. For seventy nine ninety. Seventy nine ninety for the both it's of them. Crazy. That's insane. <laughs> so, They're really thirty nine ninety five each, each or something. Yeah. yeah. That's how you did it. That's a crazy okay, deal. Okay, got so it. Jump on over there and, and get them it's while it's on sale. Only till midnight tonight is when that one ends. So, jump on and get it. Buy it, you guys. We're dinking around. Okay. Well, we love you all. Time to go. Uh, Jackson, I, are you going to play a goodbye song now? <laughs> I could play something on the kalimba, maybe. No, don't do that to us. <laughs> okay. I'll do a send-off note as my first time on the show. Send-off note, Chantel is going to send up.
That is beautiful. That's good. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but okay, we'll go for it. It doesn't have to mean anything. It was All right. scale. <laughs> okay. This is Dr. Dan Purser. God bless. Go and get healthy.